Hi, welcome to the third video of the doublet optimization uh, tutorial. This is an exciting conclusion to it. What I've shown thus far is essentially how to set up some optimization and set up some variables. The case we've been looking at is a relatively well optimized doublet, so there hasn't been a lot of bending that's been possible. What I'm going to show in this video is if you make the first surface, if you just put a fourth order aspheric coefficient on that surface, you can actually improve the third order spherical aberration in the lens and improve it. I'm not saying that this is something that you should do always or in every lens. Certainly there's always a price to be paid for making something into an A-sphere and that's kind of my public surface me service message for all the opticians out there that uh, would prefer to make uh, easier systems to make than ones that are more complicated oftentimes. But there may be some cases where you might want to uh, use an A-sphere. So this particular uh, third video is about um, improving this doublet and I'm just going to show a few more things about optimization some stuff that's a little bit um, specialized in a sense and um, just kind of special case sorts of things but things that are still pretty useful to know and help you kind of get going and thinking correctly about these problems whether you would really ever want to build the resulting lens or not or if you would prefer to do some rebending which in my view would be the next thing you'd really want to investigate rebending in other words changing the radii of curvature of these uh, different elements relative to each other to see if uh, this is actually the best solution or not so anyway okay that's enough of the upfront the first thing you need to do is make sure you've saved the result of the previous exercise the optimization and now we will save this as example doublet a sphere ASPH and uh, this is step number 20 if you're following along in the you know written tutorial notes that come with this the next thing that we have to do is we have to turn this into an a sphere um, we have to allow um, the first surface to be an a sphere now if you go straight to the variable sheet and you just tried to enter for the first surface in the system is actually surface number two. I'll show that in just a moment. If you look here, there's nothing here that actually says, oh, make this an, a general A sphere. There is the conic constant. But that's not really quite the same thing. So, or it's not the same thing at all, I should say. Why can't I get access to an A spheric coefficient with that? Well, the issue is Oslo has and this is for surface number two, Oslo has a whole bunch of different kinds of special surfaces. And when you go to the optimization, uh, oftentimes uh, when you go to set up variables, what happens is unless it thinks that it's of a certain type, the database doesn't want to allow you to enter that type of variable on. So there's a little trick to be done here. So if we go here to the standard A sphere, and we set this a sphere coefficient to something really small, 1e e to the minus 20. This is essentially doing nothing in terms of the performance of the lens. But what it's doing is it's now making it where when I come to the variable spreadsheet, let me do this a different way. So I've been clicking on this, and you can also go here to optimize variables and direct specification. Actually, you can't do it from here, I forgot. So the you can't actually come to here and do a special variable. So let me come back to here. Go to variables, click insert after. Hey, these making videos, it's not as easy as it looks, let me tell you. We go to surface number two, and here, if I do the pull down, you see you have this choice for a 4 3rd or 8 sphere coefficient. I just typed in uh, AD. We're not actually going to put any constraints on this variable. We're going to let it uh, do whatever it wants. So this is variable number six now. So we've entered that in. I like to hit my green check mark and hit save. And now we're at a point where we could actually do some optimization. And if I go ahead and I just let it optimize or try to optimize it at this point, I run into something that we've already seen. It's essentially bogged down. And why it's bogged down is it's it's really in a good local minimum and it doesn't really quite recognize that um, doing adding an A-sphere coefficient will correct this third order spherical aberration. Part of the issue certainly is that you know we've already defocused the system 
and part of it is that these other variables end up bogging it down which which I won't show that that is uh, the case explicitly but that is generally what's happened so one thing we can do is if we set this equal to zero actually maybe I will show it if we set that equal to zero and we go ahead and reiterate you see it really still doesn't change it's just essentially stuck so it's in this modality where the uh, a sphere coefficient isn't uh, it's sort of bogged down so the other variables are sort of in the way so to speak so in this case in order to improve this since it's kind of stuck what I want to do is I want to do something like what I did earlier where we essentially get rid of these bending variables these variables on the radius of curvature and thickness and these other parameters but I'm going to do it a little bit differently in this particular case it turns out that you have a choice when you go to the variable spreadsheet editor there's a damping coefficient here and what the damping coefficient does is when you're actually optimizing and damp least squares is working this damping coefficient tells the optimizer or is a parameter in the optimizer that says how big of a step can a parameter take so when this number is really high it can it can only take an infinitesimally smaller or teeny tiny little step if a step at all so that's the method that we're going to use here we're going to turn the damping coefficients up to really high values on all of the parameters except the aspheric coefficient so the number I'm going to use is uh, 1e to the 20 and I just control C and now I can control V so cut and so copy and then paste so I pasted it into all of these different variables I'm going to save this now so LSE is what I just hit. If we go back to the variables, you can see it's saved as 1e to the 20 in this particular case. And now I can, if I actually optimize, and I do it correctly, which I'll show in a moment, you will only really be changing the aspheric coefficient. And that's going to allow us to correct this third order spherical aberration that we see that really is dominating the blur of the spots for the performance. So to do this, if we go and just run the optimizer itself, you'd actually run into a problem in the fact that the optimizer's default performance or default operation is to reset these variable damping factors to 1.0, which is what I had changed them from. So the first thing you have to do when you come here to optimize iterate is you have to make sure you turn off that resetting. If you don't do that, you'll effectively do what we just did. It'll reset them to one and all the variables will be in play. The way I have it set up now with these high damping coefficients, essentially we have, or I have reset the, uh, the optimization to where those variables are frozen out. So if I don't allow those variables to reset and I do some optimization, now if you look, we have essentially some improvement in it and the variables that have the high damping factors have not changed this you know refocus has a, a small round off amount of difference in there so this is essentially what um, these damping coefficients do so we, if we want to run this a few times you can come to the history you can certainly hit on the iterate again you have to make sure to click to turn those off or you can come here to the history and you can just execute that you can see it's already pretty much settled out there's almost no change at all almost no percent change just a little bit of round off percent change so that's essentially what's happened if we look at the performance of this now you can see that we've uh, got a lot of the third order out and there's some balancing on some higher order aberration that's actually coming into play this is likely fifth order um, but it's it's interesting because if you look here off axis, you got some other things going on. So it's not just third order spherical aberration or spherical aberration affecting things. So it is indeed correcting that driving third order spherical aberration to do this. So at this point, we can certainly uh, save this as a reasonable result. Your numbers might be slightly different than what numbers I have. But again, this is round off kinds of, of stuff that we've got going on. One other factor is let's say at some point you want to reset these damping coefficients. So I've saved this file. I'm going to reset those. I just type in ITE or you can just go, which is the iterate function, or you just go and run the iterate function, but don't reset the damp allow the re the damping factors to reset and then they're all reset to one. So that's actually a reasonable state to save this in. So that is essentially what we have for um, 
steps number 20 through 23 where 21 was to re-optimize and set the damping coefficients to high values 22 was looking at the performance and 23 was resetting the damping coefficient factors so there's a few other handy tips um, for a real job you know you'd want to uh, you certainly don't want to polish all the way out to the edge so I'd really want to make the optic a little bit bigger the actual diameter size versus the the uh, optical clear aperture you also want to um, um, maybe check some surfaces in case things are vignetting in a real lens and so, so there's a whole bunch of other factors like that when you do analysis there's a whole bunch of analysis features and we have a lot of other videos on these types of topics so please uh, look at those we also have some uh, additional resources on the website and some uh, other examples on the website so I have these under handy tips just in the notes for this document for this uh, tutorial the last thing I want to show is something that I believe I've, I've probably shown in some other videos but <clears throat> it's always good to show it again especially at the end of this if we actually come to any lens file in Oslo the lens is essentially the document so I can open it in Oslo but I can also open it in a text editor and in this case when I do that this was a version of the just basic doublet setup so this doesn't have any of the optimization and variable information in it when I do that you can see it opens up essentially a set of commands which would be what would run when you open this in Oslo to create the lens file so this is useful in cases where you might want to cut parts of a file a lens out put it into another lens without having to go through the Oslo interface so everything I've showed in this video are things that you may or may not use they're not as critical but I thought a third video showing some of the additional power and capability in the program would be really useful so we I hope you found this uh, to be a useful exercise and um, uh, please uh, enjoy your time using Oslo thanks